Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP and once again, this is the one day chart. We have gradual upward movement right now sitting here just above 62 cents and everybody's so focused all over X on this cryptocurrency popping off and that cryptocurrency popping off. But I got to remind you of this, believe it or not, but XRP will pump the hardest and that is absolutely coming. And you know, people that want to pull out of XRP and go chase what's pumping right now and then try to come back into XRP later, that's not smart because when XRP does go off, it also moves very fast. You could be paying a lot more to buy back into XRP. It's better to just hold what you have and wait for it to happen. Ripple moves over 160 million. XRP is price enters revival mode. A lot of XRP being moved. Now we see this happening on a daily basis and people keep saying, oh, that's Ripple, dump it on the community once again. But I got to remind you of this. It is obvious that mega ripple transfers have no noticeable negative impact on the price of XRP. It seems like nothing can get this cryptocurrency really moving right now. I think the biggest holdback really is the SEC versus Ripple case. No institution wants to announce that they're working with Ripple. No institution wants to get involved with Ripple right now either due to the lack of regulations. That's what I really think is holding XRP back because you got to look at its use case and its utility as far as payments and moving money. The UAE has been using Ripple's technology for four years on the digital Durham. CBDCs are technologically used for tracking by means of data collection. Technology is neither inherently good or bad. But how will the technology be used? You know, when people talk about CBDCs, I'm not a fan of CBDCs. I don't like the idea that someone can track all of our payments and turn our money off if they don't like the things we're saying. But a CBDC in the right hands can be very good thing because the technology is absolutely incredible. Imagine sending a payment and having it all happen in a matter of seconds instead of a matter of days. Plus, it could also lead to less fraud in the system as well because everything would be accounted for. But in the wrong hands, we all become slaves to the system. But you could bet CBDCs are coming. They're popping up all around the world right now. I still see people denying it. They always keep saying CBDCs aren't going to happen. Something's going to prevent them from happening. But they're building out in real time right in front of your eyes. Brazil, digital currency and Ripple. Now this shows some ties to BRICS. So document from Central Bank of Brazil 2017 praises Ripple's interledger protocol for its speed settlement time, mentioning the successful integration with the Bank of England on a simulated RTGS system. In June 2020, Ripple met with the Central Bank of Brazil, and less than two months later, Central Bank has launched a CBDC working group. Brazilian Central Bank is ready to launch its CBDC and according to the president of the Central Bank Digital BRL will have integration with PIX. He also said today in the world there is no more advanced than Brazil with the real digital. MasterCard is exploring CBDC ecosystem in partnership with Ripple and Banco de Bra Brazil is one of the main targets. Brazil's president has called multiple times to end U.S. dollars trade dominance in a common currency for BRICS. When one country is working with BRICS and they're utilizing RippleNet technology, that means other BRICS countries are also going to utilize RippleNet technology. And I still think RippleNet is going to be at the core of all BRICS transactions in the future. You could see the ties that were made a long time ago. Ripple Payments user CorePay 
Formerly, Cambridge Global Payments has opened an office in India as part of their strategy to move in the Indian and Asia Pacific markets. So this is what they want to offer in phase one, financial planning and analytics, data and business intelligence, sales, variable compensation, CRM, software, credit underwriting, client support, strategy, and MA. But they're utilizing RippleNet technology. And all these partners of Ripple are using the tech. And they're advancing in this area and that area, opening up more payment rails for XRP in the future. 2024 project predictions by Brendan Berry, head of payments products. Now, recently, everybody at Ripple has been putting out there their predictions for next year. So he says, utility boom in 2024, we expect that funding will rebound with a renewed focus on companies solving real world problems and not centered purely around infrastructure. We're going beyond this and focusing on the utility behind the tech. Remember I said, utility is gonna start to kick in in 2024. Closing in on traditional FinTech, 2023 saw increased interest in crypto from fintech companies, and according to Ripple's 2023 new value report, three quarters of financial institutions are likely to explore digital asset services in the next three years, especially for cross-border payments. Stablecoins dominate outside the United States. While USD-backed stablecoins have largely been leaders in the market to date, according to chain, al chain analysts researched, a majority of stablecoin inflows to the 50 biggest cryptocurrency services have shifted from U.S. licensed services to non-U.S. licensed services since spring 2023. In 2024, we will see stablecoins from non-G7 currencies take off, creating a new entry point and gateway to crypto. You know, when people see these countries creating their own stablecoin, what they seem to forget is that no other country is going to want to accept that stablecoin when they're transacting with each other. You're still going to need that trust layer in there, XRP, that bridge currency in between two CBDCs. And, you know, people always right away, they think this is the end of XRP because this country created a stable coin. Oh, now look at this blockchain is involved. That's the end of XRP. You know how many XRP killers I've seen in the last five years? I can't count them on both hands. But guess what? XRP is still the reigning cryptocurrency. It's built to move the world's money. And there's not going to be an alternative. Tokenized real-world assets on XRP Ledger will enhance collateralized loans, improve interoperability, and attract institutional adoption, reshaping the financial sector. XRP Ledger will be a leading blockchain enabling these use cases. You know, all Ripple has to do, all the XRP Ledger has to do is capture a small percentage of tokenization. And we're going to be looking at a very expensive XRP. We all heard about real world assets by now. But what will be even bigger is RWU on blockchain, real world utility. Everything in our modern infrastructure and economy today will be disrupted by this technology. And you see supply chains, that's XDC, finance, XRP, XLM, Nexera, entertainment, Galaxy, Gala, business, HBAR, Algo, Casper, utilities, QNT, IOTA, EWT, energy web token, technology, DAG, FET, and TEO. What most of these projects share in common is that their use case doesn't solely live on the blockchain, as their utilities are meant to be bridged on chain to their respective industries to provide for new forms of innovation and disruption. 
These sectors combined together equate to over a hundred million, a hundred trillion in value. So think about how much XRP is going to capture. And that's why I always told you, if you really want to handle all the world's money, because XRP is going to move a hell of a lot of money, it's also going to be tied to tokenization, and a lot of value will come from that. Carbon credits, a lot of value will come from that. AI, value will come from that. But then if you really want to handle all the world's money, you have to diversify in crypto. That's why I always tell you, it, buy some XDC, buy some XLM, buy some HBAR, because you're not only diversifying and getting tied to all the world's money, but you're also opening up new doors on how you can earn passive income from the future. Maybe you borrow against your XRP and pay it back with passive income you're getting from XLM and vice versa. And that's how you can build generational uh, wealth the number one characteristic of payments in africa it is instant and that's what ripple payments does it makes things instant and that's what keeps it separate from the rest that's what makes it game changing that's how it could steal more and more business away from swift over time banca d'italia Carbon Footprint and XRP. Central Bank of Italy has published a document about carbon footprints, concluding target instant payment system, TIPS, consumes 40,000 less energy than Bitcoin. It also praised the XRP ledger. You know, being green is also going to be very important inside the new financial system. You know, now I start seeing these Bitcoin maxis saying that Bitcoin's going to be part of the new financial system when it rolls out. It absolutely is not going to be part of it because it's not energy efficient. You got to look at the narrative around the world right now. What is every single country doing? They're pushing towards going green, net zero by 2030. That's the biggest narrative going. And it I don't like it because it, it's going to lead to us paying for carbon credits and carbon offsets in the future. Right now, it's happening at an institutional level. Later, it's going to be happening at our level. And when if you want to drive a car, you're going to have to buy carbon offsets. If you want to take a trip, you're going to have to buy carbon offsets. Everything you do will be, rely on carbon offsets. And that's why you need to get rich off of this. This is your chance to do it just by investing in the right cryptocurrencies. Crypto is coming to every person on the planet. Take a listen to this. I think, you know, as was mentioned in the report, we will get there soon, I hope, uh, in the United States. And I think that will create a massive opportunity for growth. I think that regulation's important to kind of prevent this, this fear of you're going to go to jail or you're going you're gonna to get this wrong or you're going to go fine, right? But I think that it's really critical that we get past where's the safe place to do crypto, which I hope is soon because there's 8 billion people on the planet and about 70% of them have mobile cell phone access and digital assets enable the financialization of the internet. And we can bring financial services and digital assets to every single person on the planet that has a phone and that's gonna transcend local regulation. So I think that the key is let's get the regulation in place so we can all build businesses and create economic value globally. Did you hear what he said? First, we need regulations. And once regulations are in place, that's it. The sky is the limit for crypto. Every single person will be using crypto. Most won't even know it at, the, at first. They will figure it out later that they're tied to crypto somehow, some way. And that's when we're going to see that mass adoption, worldwide mass adoption. Yet, you're so early. You're buying XRP at $0.62. Cents. Jamie Dimon, Basel III will hurt millions of people by forcing banks to hold capital requirements. This isn't good for anyone, he says. You can hear the frustration in his voice now that JP Morgan will need to maintain capital requirements and reserves. Just take a quick listen to this. Despite zero evidence that U.S. banks are undercapitalized today, the proposed Basel III endgame rule, 10 years in the making, shockingly, if enacted, would increase capital requirements by about 25% for the largest banks. None of these proposed changes, by the way, would have effectively prevented the Silicon Valley bank failure. 
The rule would have predictable and harmful outcomes to the economy, markets, business of all sizes, and American households in ways the Federal Reserve has not studied, contemplated, or shared. Now you know why he's buddying up to Elizabeth Warren, because he knows that the banks are in trouble. And Basel III is going to put an end to all the bank fraud and the bank manipulation that's going on as well. And he does not like it. But guess what? There's no stopping it. It is absolutely coming. Central banks continue to buy gold at record highs, setting the stage for a potential gold reevaluation. Central banks continue to adopt RippleNet's DLT, setting the stage for an intersection between blockchain and gold in the context of tokenization. It's not hard to see. And you could see what's coming. Other countries are pushing towards gold backed money, gold backed currency. How can the US dollar, which is backed by nothing, compete with other? their money all those other currencies are going to rise in value while the u.s dollar continues to decrease in value and we're going to see hyperinflation come from that and that's why i can't stop buying crypto because i want to position myself for when that happens and we're early enough to do it because you know if you were looking at these cryptocurrencies two years from now you're not going to be buying xrp at 62 cents you're going to be buying XRP most likely $10 or above because throughout 2024, utility is going to start to kick in. And I've been pointing that out for a while now because I'm showing you the growth around XRP and the growth around Ripple. And it's all leading to that utility and that drive forward for this cryptocurrency. But, you know, we're lucky enough to be buying at these low prices. It'll keep you well positioned against anything that comes up in the near future. Talking about hyperinflation, the value of the U.S. dollar falling. I'm glad I don't have any money in the bank. I would much rather have my money in crypto. And I'm going to continue to push in that direction. Because I know crypto is about to make us all very rich very soon. But until it all happens, you got to stay patient and stay positive. Let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.